in First Peter, and I was only able to cover a couple of verses this morning in my quiet time because it was almost so overwhelming when I thought of the greatness um, of our salvation. We know in context we've been talking about this, or Peter's been talking about it, this great salvation that we have in Christ. And yesterday we saw in the second chapter, he begins to talk about Jesus being the cornerstone. He's building a spiritual house of us. We are the pieces of that, the church, the body of Christ. And he refers to Jesus as the cornerstone, uh, that stone that's laid that marks the trueness, uh, the stability of that whole building that's built. But he says to others, though, he, he this cornerstone, while we've received him as Savior, there are others who, uh, who don't receive him, don't receive the word, and he becomes a stumbling block for them. And then he picks up in that same thread of thought in verse 9 where he puts a contrast here. While Jesus is, is a stumbling block, they stumble over Jesus for us. But you, he says, are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you might or you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Just as Israel uh, were God's chosen race, his chosen people, we as the body of Christ uh, are his chosen people as well. Now, I don't believe that the church replaced Israel. God still has a plan for Israel. Um, but the blessings in that through Abraham, his seed, uh, would bless the whole world. We are recipients of that. And so he says that we're a chosen race or a chosen people. God has, has chosen us, again, not because of our own merits, not because of anything that we could have ever done, but God in his sovereign election has chosen us. And, and we don't understand that. I certainly don't understand that fully. Um, but I know this, that um, God, God made available, God saw to it that, that you and I heard the gospel. And we, we responded and received the gospel. And in that God has chosen us to be his people. He says, we're a chosen race. If you think about that, the God, the creator of, of the universe, the creator of all things, all powerful, all loving, all gracious, all holy God has chosen us. We're a chosen race, he says, a royal priesthood. Now here, this is a reflection of uh, in, in, in the Old Testament through the law, we had the priest that entered into the presence of God and that only once once a year. Uh, the high priest entered in to make atonement for our sin. But now he says we are a royal priesthood. We get from this the doctrine that we call the priesthood of the believer, um, meaning that now we, we have free access to the throne of God through the blood of Jesus. Isn't that great? It, it, again, it's not because of our merits or our works. But listen, we, we are encouraged by the writer in Hebrews to come boldly before the throne of grace, before the throne of God to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. We don't have to go through an earthly priest. We don't have to go through a denomination of a church. We don't have to go through any of that. By the blood of Jesus, we have absolute access into the presence of a holy God because he has covered us in his blood. We are sinless in his sight. We don't, it's not that we don't sin, we do. But God sees us as sinless and pure because he looks at us through the blood of Jesus. He has set us apart unto himself. A people for his own possession. I don't own myself. You don't own yourself. And nobody else has any right to own us. Only God. We are his. He has purchased us. He has paid the price for us. He has taken us out of the slave market and redeemed us and brought us to himself and we are his possession. There's the other side of that too, man, that if we're his possession, there's absolutely nothing that can snatch us out of his hand. We belong to him. Thank God for that this morning. I'm going to start preaching in a minute. And he, 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 that so that we might proclaim the excellencies of him. There's that proclamation. That's why we pray every day. God, give me an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. 
God, give me an opportunity to cultivate that seed that's been planted. God, if by your grace, Lord, I want to see you save somebody today. He has called us, his church, to proclaim the gospel message. The excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And somebody may say, you know, I don't know how to witness. You don't, you don't have to know how to witness. Now hear me out. You have a testimony, and the testimony is, is that you know that you are in darkness. You are separated from God because of your sin. But God, by his grace and mercy, called you into his marvelous light. And let me tell you the transformation that's taken place in my life. That is sharing the gospel. It may not be the Romans road or the plan of salvation, but in that, God has given each one of us a story, not an experience, but a story of how God saved us. Ask God to use you today to share that. Verse 10, he, he goes into some contrast here. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once we were not a people of God, but because of his grace and his mercy, and now we are God's people. Once we had not received mercy, but now we have received mercy. In every one of our lives, there should be that mark. You may not know the day and the hour when Jesus saved you, but you know that period of your life where once you were walking in darkness, once you were separated from God, but something happened, something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me. You know that, that period when God saved you. And so he, he has brought us into his mercy. Then he says in verse 11, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles. In this world, we are sojourners. We're pilgrims. We are exiles. Meaning that this is not, this is not the place that we belong. And in this world, as, as we have to view ourselves as believers in a hostile world, against the gospel, that we are just sojourners. This, this world is not my home. I'm just a traveling through, the songwriter says. We have an eternal home that we're looking forward to because we are saved. We're his children and we'll be with him forever. And so we're to view life, not holding on to anything in this life, that we're just sojourners. We're just exiles, just passing through. But the urging is, is that we abstain from passions of the flesh. We still have passions of the flesh, don't we? Yeah, every one of us do. To say we don't is just to be an outright liar. We're trying to deceive ourselves and deceive others. We all have passions of the flesh, and they rage daily. But he says, abstain from those passions. We have the Holy Spirit of God that can help us win over those passions as we yield to the Spirit of God and not to the flesh. He says, they wage war against your soul. Read Romans chapter 6 and chapter 7 today, and chapter 8, 6 and 7 primarily, where Paul describes this raging passion that he has of the flesh. And he concludes, who will save me from this? The Lord Jesus Christ, he says. And so we have these passions that we wage war against daily. Um, verse 12, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak evil against you um, as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable. You see, as Peter was writing this letter to a persecuted church, um, they were they were being persecuted severely. And he says, listen, uh, as, as you're under this persecution, keep your lives honorable among the Gentiles. Be set apart, be separate. He didn't tell them to be weird, okay? There's a lot of weird Christians I've seen that try to be just holier than thou. No, just keep your life honorable. Do the right thing. Do... Do those things that, that are righteous in God's sight so that when they, they disparage you, they persecute you, they criticize you, and in that day they were taking them, they were murdering them. He says so that when they bring, try to bring a charge against you, um, they'll kind of be put to shame because of your good works. Our culture is growing more and more hostile 
to the Christian message. Our culture is growing more and more hostile to the Word of God. Uh, and it's going to continue to grow that way. We can't change it by legislation. We can't change it by anything. That's just the way it's going to be. It's been that way uh, since the birth of the church. But he says, in the midst of that, live your lives honorable. And as persecution, as criticism grows, it's going to be more and more imperative that the body of Christ follow expressing his love, doing those things that he's called us to do so that so that when they try to bring charges against us, they'll be put to shame because of our godly living. Well, I pray the Lord blesses you today. He keeps you. Um, continue to remember to pray for those that, that need prayer. Men, remember Thursday night is our man church. Women, Friday night is uh, Catalyst, Women's Catalyst. Make plans to be there and invite somebody to come along with you. I pray the Lord's blessings on your day. He keep you. Have a great day.